This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of classes in electronic engineering, computer-aided design and 3D printing, and music production in FL Studio, which is how this background track came to be. They have high-quality classes made by experts from practically all fields, and a premium membership for as little as $10 a month gives you access to all of them. And this is my lame excuse for not making a video in a month. These might also be partially responsible, but yeah, mostly this. It's an optically isolated power amplifier circuit, with voltage and current control and feedback about both parameters. Completely analog, completely discrete. It's also a 4 quadrant supply, meaning that it can source and sync currents in both voltage polarities. And it'll have a full power bandwidth of hundreds of kilohertz. Now I need something to take control over three of these boards while running a user interface and networking and all that kind of stuff. Something cool, something powerful, something that few have mastered. I have to feed data into 9 DACs and read 6 ADCs in real time. A daunting task for a simple-minded microcontroller person like myself. An afterthought for a powerful FPGA like the Xilinx Zinc on this beautiful Digilent board. A field programmable gate array is exactly what the name suggests. A bunch of logic gates that you can reconfigure to do stuff for you. They are great for dealing with high-speed digital signals, because there's no procedural software in there, going if pin 1 is high, do this, else if pin 2 is high, do that, not to point fingers or anything. Propagation delays in logic gates are the next best thing to instant, and theoretically all gates can be busy at the same time. The Zinc also has two ARM Cortex-A9 processors, on which a minimalist Linux OS can run. To take care of deferrable tasks, like interfacing with sluggish humans who won't notice propagation delays anyway. It supports IP version 6 out of the box, gets itself a DHCP lease, and is reachable via SSH immediately. I wouldn't be surprised if OpenOffice came pre-installed on FPGA boards soon. Their pre-compiled PETA Linux comes with a few demo programs. For the most basic GPIO operations. This RGB LED fading example is executed on the processor. Boring. Let me try and program something in the actual FPGA hardware. The Xilinx Vivado software is free for this device. And Digilent has published board files so that you can program with the silkscreened pin names intuitively. There are also a few minimalist working examples. It's almost like a homely Arduino environment. Except with a different language and with a completely different way of thinking. And with a particularly cold, business-like user interface. Translating code to hardware is a bit of a tedious process that takes multiple clicks over the course of minutes. But ultimately the police car illumination arrives. Sound is not yet included. But if the synthesizer crowd gets wind of the digital signal processing capabilities on these devices, there'll be no stopping them. The programming is volatile, it vanishes when the device is restarted. So the normal workflow is to use the Vivado software to create a boot image that contains data defining the programmable logic, as well as the operating system for the processor cores. That can be stored on an SD card permanently, then the device programs itself when booting. It is known and widely accepted. So far we've seen the processor and the FPGA working on their own, but the combination of the two is what makes it such a perfect fit for this project. I want to prepare a number of samples in the processor and to have them stored in the RAM. Then the FPGA part can loop through the data and send it out to the digital to analog converters, essentially generating arbitrary waveforms at reasonably high frequencies. In the meantime, the processor can busy itself with trivial tasks like waiting for button presses or showing measurement results on a display. I don't think I can accomplish that today, because I haven't even selected the kind of converter I want. With an FPGA pulling the strings, there are no limitations. An ordinary SPI interface, low voltage differential signals, or even a fast parallel input, since we do have so many GPIO pins. I am not even kidding, that is actually the fastest deck possible. But I assume that such a configuration will start in a block diagram, where we can insert blocks like the processor itself, banks of GPIO pins, and a mind-boggling amount of other pre-made stuff. 
The hardware on the board is known to the software because of the board files provided by Digilent. I'll let it make all the connections automatically because I don't know any better yet. That results in a working block design that can be translated into an arrangement of logic gates. And that in turn can be handed over to the software development kit where then all the registers and IP blocks are prepared. I guess this is where I'll spend the next month trying to figure out exactly how to get what I want. It's complicated, but there's no way around it. An FPGA is one of the most powerful tools in electronic design after all. Almost as powerful as a 555 timer. Here's one final example of the FPGA actually collaborating with a processor. It's using an IP core called XADC Wizard that makes it easy to get readings from analog input pins. These readings are evaluated by the processor and printed on a serial console. That's still quite far away from my Osmio application, but I'm delighted that I finally made the first steps and am no longer scared of the complicated Vivado software. Alright, those were my first impressions of the Digilent Cora Z710. They are based on my own baboon level skills, so I can't claim completeness or accuracy. If you'd like to see a formal step-by-step -step introduction, there are classes on Skillshare.com. They are covering the exact same Zinc 7000 in over two hours and the basics of the Vivado software in one hour. If in the end I decide to use a large BGA chip like this, the introduction to Altium Designer will also come in handy. The first 500 to sign up with the link in the description get two months for free. Thank you for watching.